I'm Aaron Slocum, 23. You're joining me for Desire and Decorum, Book 2, Chapter 15, on the morning of your wedding to Duke Richards. He and Briar step out of the carriage at the Bath Abbey and take in the large cathedral in front of you. So this is the famed Bath Abbey. It's so beautiful to look at, even if today's events are anything but... Honestly, I find it rather... exquisite. Closing. <clears throat> exquisite. Just look at the stained glass windows. They're so intricate. If I must continue to go along with this wedding, at least it'll be something somewhere beautiful. Duke Richards and Sir Gideon pull up in a carriage behind yours. The Duke scowls at you, then glances back at Sir Gideon. I'll catch up with you in a bit, pain. I have a few words I wish to say to my dear fiance. As you wish, Her Grace. I'll show her lady's maid to the bridal room. But I come along, Miss Dally. Let us see the let us leave the happy couple to be. Don't worry, Briar. I'll see you soon. Alright, but if he tries anything, he'll face Mr. Sinclair's wrath than mine. Briar takes off her glare off of Duke Richards and then marches into the cathedral behind Sir Gideon. What could you possibly have to say to me? I am not allowed to bestow my future bride with a gift upon our wedding day. No, you're not. You cannot have anything to give me that would I, that I would ever desire. Besides, if anything's like the house crest you presented me, I'm certain I'll despise it. Ah, yes, but this is so much better. Richard snaps his fingers immediately as Valet rushes to his side. Rolling a large chest, the Duke opens it and reveals a red and white dress displaying the Carlington crest on the front. You got me a dress with your family crest on it. You couldn't at least use our combined crest? Ah, the Edgewater blood in you is good enough for that side, but this dress will show your true allegiance. How generous. I'm simply overcome with emotions right now at the sight of your gift. How could I possibly say or show my gravid gratitude your, your grace? I know you're mocking me. It won't help your situation. I expect you to wear this when we wed. If you think I'm going to marry you, then you have... You will. My guards and my friends will ensure you don't leave. Just look over there if you don't believe me. You follow the Duke's gaze towards the front, and you see several fa familiar faces guarding the entrance. Marcus Hayward. And then you scan your surroundings, but everywhere you turn you see another one of Duke Richard's acquaintances. You are just shady in everyday stance. Just shady. You may try, but you will not stop me. You see... Your friends can't hold me forever. They can hold you long enough for us to two of us to be waved. A word of advice, my lady. Don't try to escape. It won't work. Need I remind you I won your hand fair and square in our duel? Huh. Fair and square. You cheated. The terms of the duel are null and void. Me. Cheat. Nonsense. I would never do such a thing. The Richards weighs over one of the other guards to his side. Yes, Your Grace. What can I do for you? Please show Lady Bella to the bride of Swede. She seems to be a bit confused right now. It's bad luck for the happy couple to see each other before the ceremony. Besides, I'm sure she has some preparations to make over for the next few hours. 
and all of them involve your downfall. How quaint. But there's no one last thing before you go. Duke Richards leans in, cowering us, lowering his voice so only you can hear it. I don't care what you and Mr. Sinclair do. I know you will walk down that aisle to me one way or another. Lie to yourself all you desire, but you're mine. Before you can get another word out, the guards grab your arm and escort you inside the bridal suite. Not long after. Briar helps you into the dress from Duke Richards, bearing the Carlington crest. You sigh and look at yourself in the mirror. Well, it's red. Yes, it wasn't the red wedding in Game of Thrones. Do you, you want to talk about that? Um, worst case, worst gift I've ever received. The end of Lady Bella of Edgewater. Worst gift I've ever received. How could Duke Richards think this was possibly acceptable? I much prefer Edgewater's blue and gold. This is too much Garlington red for my tastes. Bella, believe me when I say you look fantastic in whatever you wear. But I might have a solution if you don't wish to wear that. How? What? Please, anything to get out of this. I might have snooped and seen the Duke's gift earlier. You little sneak, you. I told Mr. Sinclair and the rest of your friends about the dress. We all work together to get you this. Briar flints over to the wardrobe and pulls out an intricate navy dress adorned with gold trimmings and jewels. You notice in the center of the dress sits the Edgewater crest. Why, why is it like we're wearing this big brandishing thing like it's a Superman ass? My family's colors and the crest look at the Edgewater you eagle and unicorn. Briar, I'm speechless. This is simply marvelous. I can imagine... I already imagine the look on Duke Richard's face when he realizes I defied him. I could watch that all day. If you wear it, I think you'll really come into your own as Lady of Edgewater. No one could deny where you belong. Wear true colors to defy the Duke. I mean, at least this one kind of looks pretty? Question mark. It's all stupid. It's all stupid. Why are we even participating in this? Why? It's beautiful, but I'm afraid I must decline. People will know my allegiance lies with Edgewater, regardless of my dress. You look around the room, your eyes lingering on the empty vanity, and nod to yourself. It's not entirely what I envisioned, but I think I'm ready as I'll ever be. Is this really happening, though? I thought my grandmother would be back by now. Take a deep breath and begin pacing across the room. Briar sits patiently on the settee, watching your every move carefully. She'll be here soon, I hope. I've got some your evidence against the Duke on me, just in case. Thank you, Briar. I'm fortunate to have... Just then you hear a sharp knock on the door. Could that be my grandmother? Talk about good timing. Briar quickly opens the door and to find Mr. Sinclair. Briar rushes him inside and checks that no one else is outside. I hope I might have a few private moments with... As if you need to ask, it just so happens that I need to be somewhere else. Like outside, guarding the door if you need me. Briar gives you a wink before disappearing behind the door, leaving you alone with Mr. Sinclair. The two of you maintain the distance across the room as you stare into each other's eyes. Neither of you breathes a word for uh, several moments until... Good day, Ernest. Dare I ask how you are? I don't know uh, that I could classify it as good, but seeing you certainly it makes the day better. Mr. Sinclair closes the space between the two of you, then slides his arm around your waist, pulling you close. 
I just need to see you before the ceremony. I couldn't allow myself to wait until after. Mr. Sinclair's words falter. You cup his cheek as you lock eyes with him. Until after the wedding. I wish I were marrying you instead. As do I. You've captured my heart. I want the whole world to hear me shout it from the rooftops. But what are we to do? The Duke's guards are everywhere. It's impossible to escape. Ernest. I still believe my grandmother will make a come through. I need hope, however small there might be. My grandmother will arrive to save the day, I believe it. Well, if you haven't given up hope, neither will I. Sign, so bury your face into the crook of Mr. Sinclair's neck. He wraps his arms around you even tighter. Why can't we just stay here forever? The presence is so comforting. I cannot begin to tell you how much I wish we could. But Duke Richard's erratic behavior, who knows where he'll whisk you away to after the wedding. For all I know, I'll be on the other side of the world without a chance to pin you a word. We can only hope our good fortune does not run out, but if it does... Mr. Sinclair strokes your cheek, his hand warm against your skin, he peers deep into your eyes, and your breath becomes shallow. Let us be one together. I want you. I need you before we're too late. Forget the Duke, forget the wedding, forget everything. Let the world fade away so only we remain, intertwined as close as two souls can be. I don't, I can't say farewell to you. Not yet. Ernest, I... Seize the day with this intimate moment with Mr. Sinclair. Say goodbye. You throw your fingers across Mr. Sinclair's cheek and smile half-heartedly. You decide not to ask Mr. Sinclair to stay with you longer. This is just isn't the time, Ernest. Let's deal with Duke Richards first, and we shall have forever together afterwards. This is very distasteful if I, if I don't say so myself. Alright, forever with you sounds delightful. Mr. Sinclair holds you close and sighs. Like one more, one more quote unquote sexual encounter before I hand you off to the Duke so he can essentially do horrible things to you. Like, really, dude? Bella. I know what sigh that means. I don't want you to leave. You think I wish to? It's the furthest thing from what I want, but we don't want someone to catch us. You mean besides Briar? Yes, aside from her. Mrs. Sinclair squeezes you once more, then starts towards the door. Wait. You can't leave before... I... You give me one last kiss. You sling your arms around Mr. Sinclair and kiss him passionately. Bella. Oh, Bella. Mrs. Sinclair tightens his hold around you and kisses you deeply, urgently, and longingly, until at last you part. I suppose this is goodbye, then. Indeed it is. Goodbye, Bella. My Bella. The feel of his lips lingers as you watch Mr. Sinclair disappear through the door. Immediately after he shuts you, collapse on the settee and bury your face into your hands. Briar soon appears beside you and rubs your back soothingly. So how was it? Briar, come on! Playfully hit Briar, and she smirks at you and shrugs. What? You look a bit flushed. Did you kiss? You are something else, Briar. And you love me for it. It's all part of my duties as your best friend, you know. Besides, my romantic life so uncertain. I simply must live vicariously through you. Briar takes your hand in hers and stares at you sincerely. I know that Mr. Sinclair left, but I wondered if there was anyone else you might want to spend a few intimate moments with. Oh yes, the whole town. Bring them all in, one at a time. Jesus. Briar, what are you implying? There, that you are a free woman. 
you can do whatever you want with whomever you want. You're not married yet, so absolutely nothing is holding you back. Besides, when you agree that you deserve a bit of time to unwind. Didn't I just do that technically if I chose a diamond choice with Mr. Sinclair? Perhaps. I suppose a relaxation wouldn't be a horrible thing. I just don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. And you won't. You deserve all the happiness in the world and more. I guarantee you that everyone will understand. Simply say the word and I'll go retrieve that certain somebody for you. You are a better friend than I deserve. False, I'm the best friend you do deserve. Share another intimate moment of Jesus, Mother of Christ. So I like how everyone's wearing the red for the Carlington. Call Miss Parsons at your room. Yes, call them all. Call even the baker. I need a fresh loaf. I am so grateful for your willingness, Briar, but I don't need to see anyone else before the ceremony. At least not like that. If you insist, Bella, I suppose it's time to get the show on the road, then. You take one last look at yourself in the mirror and smooth out some of the wrinkles on your dress. All right, it's time to go. Wait, you're forgetting something blue. Friar hands you the Duke's blue ribbon fashioned into a small bow. Mmm, that thing. Ah, yes. How could I possibly forget? You laugh as you tuck the small item away. At least I'll have a touch of Edgewater Blue with me on the altar. I couldn't have said it better myself. And Ryer, make your way to the foyer right outside of the chapel's entrance. You look around, you see straggling guests congregating before the ceremony. Oh no, so many people would be here. She's the only one wearing, literally wearing blue. You better find a seat before they're all taken. I don't want to leave you, though. I know, but I might not make it through if, if I can't face... If I can find your face for reassurance. All right. Good luck then, Bella. And remember, this isn't over yet. I right, guess you one comforting last embrace, then heads to the chapel. I hope you're right, Briar. Ah, Lady Bella, you are radiant as ever. Thank you, my lord. I suppose you're performing the ceremony today? Indeed. Congratulations to you on your wedding day, my lady. I'm so happy it all worked out for you. To think you won't be Countess of Edgewater, but Duchess of Carlington. My lord. <clears throat> Please don't remind me of that. This marriage isn't what I desired. I wanted, no, oh, I want to marry another, but I became engaged to Duke Richards. But your grandmother, the, the Duke, said, I, th I thought you... You wanted this. No, but there's not much left I can do. That's over the Duke's guard, intently watching you from the corner of the room. What? I'll come over there and smack the crap out of you. I, I just wonder what advice my father would give me were he still here. I'm so unsure about everything. This wasn't how I pictured my wedding without father and mother. I truly feel for you, my child. I wish I could offer words of comfort in these times. You know, you remind me of your father. He wasn't always so certain, either. I have a difficult time believing that. Every action he took, father was so sure of his decision in the moment. Ah, I can assure you that wasn't always the case. I saw the Earl, God rest his soul, struggle and learn many lessons throughout his life. Especially when it came to your brother, Harry. But he seemed like the perfect father. Ah, to you, but he learned through trial and error. I know your father isn't here now, but perhaps I can send you down the aisle with some happy memories of him and Harry. I'm sure there are some words of wisdom to be had in these memories. Something to make the time, trying times, more bearable. It would be nice to hear more about Father and Harry. No. 
Yeah, I'm sure it'll appease me when I'm, you know, I'm being forced into things with Duke. Sweet mother of Christ. Your offer is quite generous, my lord, but I don't know what there's time to listen to a story. Mm, it is not matter. I understand, my child. In that case, I wish you all the greatest fortune, my lady. I need to go through, but I shall see you down the aisle shortly. Bishop Monroe walks through the large door to the chapel, leaving you with the remainder of stragglers. The Saint Sir Gideon saunters over to you and holds out a arm for you to take. Bishop Monroe is such a kind soul. Well, shall we head in, my lady? Do you mean to presume you're walking me down the aisle? Duke Richards insisted I give you away, seeing as your own father can't do it. Oh, I was under the assumption that I I was being given away by... You look around by the few people in the foyer. Mr. Chambers. Quickly grab Mr. Chambers and pull him to where you and Sir Gideon stand. Mr. Chambers is my close friend, and I would be ashamed to have anyone else walk me down the aisle. Oh, uh, yes, uh, all of that is correct. I'm supposed to give Lady Bella away. You seem shocked. See, Sir Gideon, you're no longer needed here. Very well, then, as long as you do walk down the aisle. Sir Gideon, the storm's past you and into the chapel. Mr. Chambers offers you his arm. I think it's about time we head in, shall we? You hear the music change from beyond the chapel's doors. They slowly open, and you walk down the aisle. Your eyes sweep across the cathedral's chapel, taking in the floral decorations leading up to the altar. Well, I mean, it's pretty. Practically everyone I know is here. March down the aisle to the music, meeting eyes for several of the guests. Such a happy couple. I'm gonna kill you. Stay strong, Bella. But, right before you reach the front, you lock eyes with Mr. Sinclair. Bella. Ernest. Finally reach the steps of the altar and meet Duke Richards. He takes in your appearance. Lady Bella, you look lovely this afternoon. Hmm, not another word. If you finally accepted your fate, you are my bride. Your Grace. Remember this isn't finished until I say I will. Things seem pretty finished where I stand. Bishop Monroe clears his throat in front of you, and the crowd falls island. You give Duke Richards one last glare before turning to face the bishop. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today in sight of God, and in the face of... What is he saying? The blight of God, are we all sick? <laughs> yes, for watching this and just sitting there, yeah. You turn and notice Viscount Wesley standing in the middle of his pew, yelling at Bishop Monroe. My lord, can you not whisper? I can't hear a word. Oh, my apologies, Viscount Wesley. I'll speak up. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here in the sight of God. Next to you, Duke Richards, balls his fist, seething silently as the bishop speaks louder. Nor the old coot to just skip to the next part. That's it. If I stall, I can give my grandmother more time. My lord... You can't skip this part. It's so vital to the ceremony. And Viscount Westonley is such an important guest. In fact, we must move him closer. I don't think that's... But before Duke Richards can get another word in, you're already halfway to Viscount Westonley. You take his hand and escort him to the front row. Again, my lord, if you'll, you'd oblige. Dearly beloved, we're n nearly loved. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. Raise a hand to silence Duke Richards and move his gown wastingly even closer so that he's standing on the steps of the altar. Once more, my lord. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, we're gathered here. Again, 
steal in the sight of God. It's about time someone spoke up. Duke Richards groans next to you and glares of his count Weston lay standing beside him as the bishop continues with the ceremony. And what can we say of marriage and love? True love. It is the blessing from on high, the twinning of two souls lost in enough of these intolerant and analogies. Go to the next part. But I... If any man should have just cause why these two cannot be enjoined... You go into the pews and small Mr. Sinclair beginning to stand. He takes a deep breath, bracing himself to speak. Duke Richards follows your gaze and merely scowls. Hmm. Then I urge you to speak. I bother with that full go that as well. It's, um, very well, your grace. I require and charge you both with... Bishop Monroe continues with the ceremony, but you glance back. Mr. Sinclair's face falls, and he turns to a seat. Resign. I... Bruh! Bruh! You're gonna leave a woman of your life hanging! Oh my god. You can't do that, Your Grace. I believe I just did. But... I want to hear that part. You... Oh, you do? I'm, I'm so sorry. Get over it. We're moving on. You have some nerve. Will you, Duke Tristan Richards of Carlington, have this woman to be your wedded wife? Will you love her, comfort her, honor? Yes, yes, I will. And will you, Lady Bella Hartford of Edgewater, have this man to be your wedded husband? Will you love, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health? and forsaking all others as long as you both shall live. I... You look around the chapel, and all eyes are on you. I will not. No, I will not. You hear gasps erupt from the ground. Suddenly the large chapel doors burst open. Who dares interrupt you see your grandmother hurrying down the aisle. Wait! It's too late, I already did decline him. But hey, thanks for showing up now, Grandma. When you notice who stands behind your grandmother. Hold these proceedings at once! Queen Charlotte. The Queen of England has arrived at your wedding. Can she stop the ceremony before the final bow? I mean, technically, I just declined him in front of God and the priest, so... I mean, is there really... I mean, is there really an ability to... You know? Like, he can't force you at gunpoint to say, Yes, I do. I'd rather die. Okay? So, bye. Um... With that being said, thanks for watching. You know what to do, and I'll catch you guys... Oh, in the next chapter. Bye.